What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel Reef RX. In today's video we're going to be talking about my sump. I'm going to give you an overview of my sump and I'm also going to uh, explain what a sump is for the beginners that watch this video. I know it's, it can be pretty overwhelming looking at all this equipment and not knowing what this, what each piece does. So we'll kind of get into that each, a little bit and um, we'll go from there. So what is a sump? So a sump is the filtration essentially for your tank. So most of your water is cleaned through your sump and each piece of equipment here serves a purpose. So to start, we have our main drain. This is where the water from the tank overflows. So it comes down into the, the overflow that's up top from it being pumped up from the sump and it comes down a main drain. My sump also has a emergency drain on the left. So if for some reason that main drain was to ever get clogged, the tank wouldn't overflow onto the ground and go down that main drain. And the main drain, um, it's kind of hard to see. I don't think you can see it, but the main drain doesn't go all the way uh, under the water level. So if there's water flowing down the main drain, there's a better view of it right there. I'll hear water splashing, because um, right now the sump is quiet and that's the way it should be running. So from the main drain, and, and what this uh, valve is here, in case you're wondering, this is called a gate valve. Um, so you can adjust the flow that goes through the main drain. If I had this wide open or if I didn't have a gate valve, I would hear like a suction sound at the top of my tank and be pretty noisy. Um, Waterbox makes a really good tank and this tank really run, runs like whisper quiet. So you use this to adjust the flow. Once it's dialed in, you're usually pretty, you're good. You don't really have to mess with it. Um, so from the main drain, uh, the water will flow into uh, your filter socks if you have them, or in my case, I have a fleece roller. And so what the purpose of the fleece roller does, or the filter socks, is to grab the bigger particles that come down, so like leftover food, some fish waste. Now uh, you can see it's running there. And it'll keep running because I don't have, um, I just took this off. But essentially the way this works, the water level will rise inside this when uh, the, the uh, fleece gets clogged. It hits this sensor here on the side. And once it hits the sensor, it tells it that the water level has risen and you need to turn the roll. So you can see here is a clean roll and um, it feeds through and there's your dirty roll on the other side. So it, it captures those bigger particles um, to help clean your water. And it actually does a really good job at nutrient control as well. So removing uh, fo uh, removing the stuff before it can break down to phosphates um, and nitrates. Um, so from there, so if you have filter socks, uh, you have to consistently wash those. I'm, I don't want to do that, so that's why I, I have the, the roller here. So from there, my uh, the water flows into this main chamber. This is all opened up. Um, this on the side here, all this green stuff growing, this algae, it's called a refugium. Um, and you can grow different types of macroalgae in here. And so the, the macroalgae that I grow is, it's called catomorpha or cato for short. Um, so essentially uh, this light here is called a refugium light. So it, it has, a it's, has a bunch of different spectrums on here to uh, target growth of macroalgae. So the reason why you grow algae in your sump is because you don't want algae growing in your display tank because it wouldn't look too nice. Um, so usually you have this uh, refugium light off cycle with your tank light. So if my tank lights are on from 9 a.m. Um, to let's say 5 p.m., then I'd want my refugium light on when my tank lights are off. Um, and the reason for that is it helps keep the pH up. So when your lights are on during the day, it helps with pH. And then when your lights are off, you can use your uh, refugium light to help with pH. I personally have never noticed a difference with the pH with having um, this light on. And I do battle low pH, and we'll talk about that in a minute, exactly what I do for that. So you do want to harvest uh, some of this algae. So as you can see here, I have quite a bit in here. Um, I'm probably due for a harvest, so you can uh, sell it to fellow reefers, you can give it to fellow reefers, or you can just throw it out. Um, also, the refugium is really good to house pods. I know I have a lot of pods in this tank, and I have a mandarin, so I want to keep my pod population up. So the uh, refugium is it's like a safe haven for pods to breed in your tank. Um, also in your main chamber, usually you'll see uh, like live rock uh, to help with the um, surface area. So I do have a, uh, a large rock in the back there. Um, so you just kind of, and then you also have like um, your heaters and stuff. So my heaters right there at the bottom. 
And then I have my probes for my um, my Neptune controller, so it monitors my pH, the ORP, the temperature, and the salinity. So all your equipment, you kind of want to have, like, if you're dosing, like, you want all that stuff in the sump. I do have uh, lines in there in the back for when I, where I dose stuff. Um, right there, I'm not sure if you can see them. Um, so all that happens there. One more thing I do have in my uh, in the main chamber is I have a, um, a reactor pump. So what a reactor uh, is for is you can run certain types of media. So if you look on the side of my tank here, I have a BRS dual reactor. I'm running GFO and carbon. So um, I have manifolds, which we'll talk about in a second right there. Um, but the purpose to having a separate pump is because I don't want this reactor to run 24-7 when my return pump's going. So I have a separate pump so I can put it on the timer. So that, that's your main chamber there. And then from there, you... So sometimes you'll have separate chambers, like this this whole um, refugium being a separate chamber. I don't have that room. I have it all together. Works fine for me. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So. Um, each sump is different uh, and it's customizable, um, but this is just the way my sump is. So after that, um, I have a little, well, it's like uh, the egg crate there to kind of keep the uh, Kato on this side, um, but the water flows into this next chamber here, um, which I have two things. I have my skimmer. So what the purpose of the skimmer is, is to get uh, the smaller particles that have, that have broken down into the water to get those out. So it helps with nitrates, um, keeping nitrates down and essentially um, this cup so it's clean now but if you look at some of my past videos you'll see the cup, cup is really dirty um, I'm not really using the skimmer to actually skim if you see I have this like wide open and I and I have my controller here it's it's set all the way high what I'm using the skimmer for is to research to, to send this air through a uh, co2 media to scrub the co2 out of the tank to bring up my pH so I ordered, um, well actually it is skimming, I'm surprised. Um, I have this recirculating skimmer I, uh, piece here I bought from Fish of Hex. And essentially the air is sucked through there over to this reactor here. Well, I have two pieces. I have this container on the left to catch if there's any skim that comes through and then it goes through this reactor which scrubs the carbon dioxide out of the air. And then it returns back into the tank right here through this hose so the air just constantly recirculates. So um, my nutrients are pretty low in this tank, therefore I don't really need to use the skimmer to actually um, remove nitrates out of the tank because my nitrates are, are ultra low. Um, but if I, if I did need to do it, I could just put, you know, adjust the flow here on my skimmer, um, raise the water level a bit and I'd be all set. So from there, um, I also have my return pump in the back. I'm not sure how good you can see it, um, but I have the return pump. So what the return pump does is it pumps the water from the sump back up into the tank. So um, I have quite a bit going on here with the return line and I'll explain all that to you. So they have a return line um, off of a T right there. So it comes up and hits that T. So one line um, will go straight up to these manifolds, which we'll talk about in a minute and then uh, the rest of it comes up to the to the tank here. Um, this here is called a check valve or a back flow valve. So when I put the tank on feed mode, naturally the, the water is gonna siphon to the level where my return nozzles are. Um, I don't want that suction. It can, it'll raise the level of your sump. Um, and if you're not careful with it, it can overflow your sump depending on how low your levels are. You don't want to rely on that um, check valve because, at least for overflowing your tank, because um, if something ever happened, you don't want your tank to overflow. Um, I just don't want that back siphon. So if, if I didn't have this, my tank water level would probably come up to about here. Um, so nothing would overflow, but um, that's what that's for. So there's a little rubber stopper here that when the flow stops, it falls in there, prevents flow from going back. And then I also have a shutoff valve here. So if for whatever reason um, I needed to shut it off to maybe clean that uh, check valve, I can do that as well. Makes life a bit easier. Um, and on the other side here, so if it's not going back into the tank, it comes over to these manifolds. So with the manifolds, um, you can hook up different reactors. So if I had a reactor I wanted to run 24 seven with my return pump, I could hook, hook it up right here the quarter inch um, push connect 
and I would just turn this valve and the water would flow out through there. Um, so that is my sump and what I have going. A couple other important things to talk about. I have what's called an auto top off. So the auto top off on the side here, um, this is a fresh RODI water. So what happens is your tank evaporates water. When your tank evaporates water, salt does not evaporate. So it'll raise your uh, salinity. So what you need to do is replenish the fresh water into your tank. So the water level in my sump will drop and it'll be in this last chamber where the return pump is. So I have a um, auto top off which has a sensor back there. And when the water level drops, it tells it that, hey, we're low on water. Let's, let's pump some more fresh water back in here. It'll turn on and when the water level rises and it hits that sensor, it'll stop. So it keeps the salinity uh, very stable. Um, which, in my opinion, is, is really key to us. The first key to success is st stability. So, got to have the auto top off. Um, I really like having the reef mat so I don't have to change or clean fil uh, filter socks. Um, and on the left side of the tank, I'm kind of embarrassed to show you, but it's a disaster of wires um, for all my equipment. So I have dosing heads here, so I, I dose... Um, Alpha Reef, um, which doses your calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, trace elements. It's, it's one, one shot for everything. Um, I also dose iodine because my tank goes through quite a bit, so I dose that as well. And then I have a dosing head um, set up for magnesium. Sometimes that drops a little low, so I just add a little bit extra magnesium, but not often. The Neptune Trident here, this will test your alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium, the three major elements in your reef tank. Um, and then everything here um, is all Neptune equipment to control everything uh, for my tanks. So my tanks essentially automated, um, which is really cool. So when I go away, I don't really have to worry about much. So um, that's the overview of the sump. If you guys have any questions, uh, please be sure to let me know in the comments. A couple other things actually I have here. If you look on the left, there's a little sensor there. Um, this is a water level sensor. So when the water level rises and it hits that sensor, it'll tell me that the sump water level is high. So on normal, normal circumstances, uh, that sensor should never go off. Even when I put it into feed mode, it should not go off. And then I have the same thing, but when the sump is low. So if this water level is below where it should be, with, um, that means the auto top off is not working or something else is wrong. So it'll send me an alert or essentially I need to get to my tank to, to see what's going on. So. But I think that's it for this. Um, like I said, if you have questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. I know there's a lot of stuff going on here. If you're new, this can be pretty overwhelming. So um, we all started somewhere. So no shame in not understanding what we got going on here. So hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and we'll chat soon.